Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the cave. If this is your first time finding me, I do a lot of giveaways. All you have to do to win is comment on this video and subscribe to the channel. Today, we're gonna dive into the 1996 release, AT Aliens. Okay, so after 1994, Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music went certified platinum. LaFace Records gave Outkast more creative control and more advanced money for their follow-up album. Well deserved. I mean, they recorded their first album at 18 years old. So they're, right now, they're living it up. A part of that living it up, Andre 3000 could afford to do whatever he wanted to do. He started dressing a little bit more different, whatever you want to call it. He became a vegetarian, but on the first album, he had already said something about not eating beef and pork. So I think he was a vegetarian from before. Okay, so Andre stopped smoking weed. Big Boy's doing some serious life changes as well. In 1995, his girlfriend gave birth to his first child. So we're going to get completely different cats on this album. So that says a lot. I mean, when you think about the first album, a big part of what they had to say was talking about smoking and chilling, and they had a whole song dedicated to that. So through the entire process of Southern Playalistic Cadillac music, neither member were involved in the production process at all. That changed quickly within purchasing beat machines prior to recording ATL. So for the first time, these two are both looking to be more involved in production, and for the first time, Big Boy is a father. I sense a lot of growth, a lot of inspiration all over the place. Let's dive in. Wait, 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 hold up. Before we move forward, can we talk about the artwork? I know that this isn't the first time it's been done. I mean, the Jizza just released Liquid Swords, but these two as animated characters on the cover of a comic book is so dope. I mean, 1996, I'm 11 or 12, so it resonates with me immediately. LaFace Records reached out to Frank Gomez, who illustrated the duo as superheroes in a room full of dark, monster-sized villains. They won me over with the artwork alone. I didn't need to hear elevators to want this album. Are they superheroes? Are they villains? Who are they fighting? Oh, and just in case you're wondering, Frank Gomez would go on to draw for a few comic books, but mostly known for working in the Marvel Animation Studios, developing Guardians of the Galaxy, the TV series, as well as Hulk and the Agents of Smash. But that's enough of that. Let's get to this hip hop. Two dope boys. Immediately, we're introduced to the same robotic alien voice from the last song of their debut album, which is dope with the continuity from last album to this album. But aside from that, this one has a southern boom bap hip hop feel. You can see the growth in the duo already. Keep in mind they were 18 years old when they recorded their debut. This time around, not only are they more seasoned, but also growing as artists, mastering the art of writing a beat. And Dre even threw in a little bit of storytelling in there. This is dope hip hop music. It's a great way to set the tone for the album. AT Aliens, more spaceships, but more dope production. Uh, just like on the first line of Southern Playalistic Cadillac music, Big Boy starts off by saying it's the M.I. Crooked Letter. As I covered in the album review, that before landing on the group name Outkast, they called themselves the Misfits. But this is straight hip hop. I mean, the beat is nasty. The verses are on point. I mean, since being booed at the 95 Source Awards, they clearly have a huge chip on their shoulder. That's what it feels like. I truly love how they embrace being outcasts. Not just social outcasts, but outcasts in the music industry. Dre says, they alienate us because we differ. You gotta love that. Even though the fans have embraced outcasts, they still get shade from the music industry. But instead of crying about it, they've embraced it to the point that now they're using it to their advantage. And according to the credit, this was actually produced by the duo as well. Wheels of Steel. Man, man, man. For one, this one just takes me back. I feel like I'm 15 again. This was just, man. Okay, just like the last track, this is actually credited as being produced by Dre and Big Boy themselves, like nobody else. It's not like a, an association or co-produced, no, it just says Outkast, that's it. I mean, I can't say enough how I love the energy of this album, especially the first half. It's so hip hop, but it's still so country, and it's so dope. I mean, they didn't, they didn't sell themselves out. They're not trying to be something they're not. They just upgraded who they were, they're growing. It's crazy, and if it somehow went over your head, 
The wheels of steel refer to turntables, and if you listen to this again and again, listen to how nasty some of the scratching on this one is. I can't find anywhere who this DJ was, but it's some serious scratching. I literally just, I wanna ramble through this whole video just so I can keep letting the song play. Wheels of Steel is so live, so dope. Love it. Jazzy Bell. Andre and Big Boy are actually comparing today's women to their promiscuous ways with Jezebel from the Bible. All right, Jezebel from the Bible had a bad reputation that included murder, prostitution, and was basically the enemy of God. But in this song, Outkast hopes today's women can control themselves at least enough to raise the next generation. There's also a clear disdain for women who claim rape after consensual sex. As Big Boy name dropped Tupac, who was just out on bail after a sexual assault charge, even though the woman admitted she had consensual sex with him. Then in closing, you can hear Cujo's line from Goody Mob's lead single, Cell Therapy. That verse shares the same idea. Good music. Elevators. So this was the lead single. It dropped July 9th, so that's 49 full days ahead of the release date, or seven whole weeks ahead of the release date. This was on the street building anticipation for a while. We're talking like two whole months this thing was playing and radio rotation and all of that. But if you listen to the song, it details Outkast's rise from nothing to something. Capped off with an insane verse from Andre 3000, which is straight storytelling hip hop. Dope, dope, dope music. It was actually a line from Big Boy's verse where he said, we're moving up in the world like elevators. That's what named the track. But you can't say enough about this one, so I'm not gonna try. Over the Woods. It is a filler track. I mean, it really fits the vibe of the album right now. Nothing truly notable to report. It's two big boy verses with a 3,000 verse in between. It's cool. I mean, it's nothing amazing, but it's slick. Babylon. More biblical references. Andre sees America as the Bible's version of Babylon, which embodies greed, lust, and evil. This one is a bit of a change up. It's not on the level of production as what we've heard thus far on the album, but this is mostly about faith, similar to the track Jazzy Bell. They're speaking about what they see, and they're hopeful that people will change for the greater good. Waylon. Outcast wails on the competition here. I love hearing Big Boy grow as an artist. His lyrics are like in the moment, so they tell the audience what year it is without having to tell them what year it is. Like he mentions OJ was found guilty. That happened in 95. He name drops Kaiser Sose, who was the lead character in the 1995 film The Usual Suspects. Or even earlier on Jazzy Bell, he referenced 1995's Waiting to Exhale or 1994's Dumb and Dumber. So you know exactly what year it is just by listening to what he has to say. Mainstream. Good substance. It features Timo and Cujo from the Goody Mob. Uh, this one touches on the struggle to survive in the hood and how to thrive, especially after success. When you look at it from that standpoint, it's deep. It kind of gives you a different perspective than just, you know, trying to come up and trying to get out the hood. Well, these cats are in a point where they are technically can be out the hood if they want to, but now they still have to deal with different things. Dope perspective. I can appreciate perspective. Decatur song. Yet another Bible reference. The vibe of the album has completely changed. Not to say that this isn't good music, but it's a completely different feel than the first half of the album. It's a lot more features during this stage of the album as well. This one has Big Gip and Cool Breeze, and this is the only song of the album that doesn't have Andre in it. Still more Bible-themed music, as you can hear from the choir harmonizing as the song fades out. Millennium. This time, Dre feels like he's going crazy for believing that there is a God. Then his shaky faith makes him question if the devil was infiltrating him. Big Boy touches on equality and the civil rights movement. It's filler, but it's still good music. It's a lot. It's a lot of substance. A lot more solar system talk too, if you if you catch that in there. Extraterrestrial. This one you're just waiting for the beat to drop, but both Big Boy and Andre drop sick, sick, sick verses over the simplest of beats. I don't even really want to call it a beat. It's just like a, and it's very subtle. It's not really much production whatsoever. But Outkast has fully embodied this whole extraterrestrial thing, and I love it. I mean, who else is taking that angle? They already said, you know what? We're coming from the South. Y'all ain't gonna respect us as MCs. Y'all ain't gonna respect us as hip hop artists. It's like we aliens. Watch this. I love it. 13th Floor, Growing Old. So 13th Floor features Big Rube, who was a first generation Dungeon family member and was actually a member of the Society of Soul. I kind of clown the Society of Soul on Outkast's first album because they had a solo song on Outkast's album and I'm like, yeah, we just want to hear Outkast. But Big Rube was an original member. This most definitely would not be the last thing Big Room would be featured on, but we'll get to that at another time. We'll talk about ATL and poetry, all that. But he does spoken word. Anyway, on Growing Old, Outkast ponders their future. 
I mean, to me, it feels as if Outkast wants to show their growth and come from a more mature place. It's hilarious that Andre 3000 uses some insane wordplay in his few verses, but something he says that goes unnoticed is that we ain't going to stop until we hit the big screen. Wait, what? <laughs> now, in this moment, we had no idea he would become a top five level MC. He would star in movie after movie after movie after movie and not release music. Right now, all we see is hunger. Young Southern cat, hunger. 20, 21 year old hunger he trying to come up he want to make a name for himself he want to be respected south got something to say but he said we ain't gonna stop until we hit the big screen was he foreshadowing if that's the case then he did exactly what he said he was going to do he put out a few albums got respected made a lot of money and then eh, going to movies boom 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 hey i respect it either way when listening to this all over again you hear stuff for the first time you didn't hear before but let's keep it moving i'm not going to spend any time on elevators the remix it's just, you know, as I said before, uh, the original Elevators, which is me and you, was allegedly produced by Outkast. So this one was produced by Organized Noise. It just made its way on the album. So as I said earlier, Outkast self-produced a few tracks on here. Surprisingly, the dopest beats were produced by Outkast. I mean, AT Aliens, Wheels of Steel, Elevator. The less energetic tracks were produced by Organized Noise. But this album proved that Outkast weren't just a fluke after their debut. They actually got better. It took it a step further. This album album has a completely different feel. Uh, both of them are in their early 20s, not just teenagers, and the album has all the things you look for in a classic hip-hop album. So based on Cave Review's seven category metric of production, flow, lyric, substance, impact, longevity, and originality, AT Alien scored a 96%. I guess the South really did have something to say. I know a lot of their rhymes, they speak as if they're ahead of their time. They truly were. Do me a favor, go back and listen to your favorite albums from 1996. This one will bang today. It's not many albums you can go back to 1996 and put it in right now or download it, however you listen to your shit. This will bang right now. And since we're talking about albums released in 1996, check out one of these. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Let's keep it hip hop.